Both men weighed in at 118 pounds on our unofficial scales. Montiel weighed in at 134 pounds. Donaire rehydrated eight pounds to 126. That's a look at the tail of the tape for our main event tonight on HBO's Boxing After Dark. 28-year-old Nonito Donaire. In the tradition of proud Filipino fighters, Flash and Logan, Pato Villa, introducing Nonito Former flyweight champion made three successful defenses on that title. Effervescent personality. Says his opponent reminds me of me. Speaking of Montiel. Roy, let's take a look on some of the things that you expect to see in this fight tonight. Well, first of all, I expect Montiel to come out and try to gain respect, to show him that he's in here against the best champion around right now. He has a big left hook, and he must use that to get some respect. And what about for Donaire? Donaire needs to use feints and prove his presence, too. But by doing that, he needs to stay outside, use his straight punches to try to be quicker than uh, Montiel. All right, let's go to the middle part of the fight. Now you see it unfolding first for the champion, Montiel. For Montiel to be in there, he, have to, he has to get close, land good body shots with that strong left hook, and actually body and head shots. But in the middle of the fight, you got to go to the body side. And what about for Donaire? For Donaire, I expect more feints, uh, more lateral movement, and more hand speed. He has good hand speed, and he has to use that tonight. All right, let's move to the late stages now of the fight, starting with Montiel. Montiel has to continue to keep the pressure on the younger fighter, try to land that big left hook, make it a problem, and make it become a problem for the younger fighter. And what about for Donaire? For Donaire, he has to use his footwork, stay left and right on a lateral axis, uh, on a lateral, lateral axle, and stay in control of the later rounds to win well, the fight. Well, whichever guy can keep their plan over 12 rounds will be victorious. And here comes Fernando Montiel. Fernando Montiel has been for years a world-class fighter. But when he made the decision to stop being a safety-first fighter, he not only became more exciting, he became more effective. I don't think he was ever regarded quite at the level he is now regarded within boxing circles, and that's nipping at the heels of the top 10 pound-for-pound fighters in the world. Donaire firmly ensconced in that top ten. Let's send it to the ring and Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino, this is the main event of the evening. Being brought to you by Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated in association with Promociones Sanfe in La Cerveza Tecate, patrocinador oficial. This bout, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC and WBO Bantamweight Championships of the World. The judges for this bout are Ed Kugler, Patricia Morse Jarman, and Dave Moretti. The referee, Russell Mora. And now, ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, from Las Vegas, Nevada, the Philippines, and Mexico, ¿Quién es el más macho? 
Introducing first, the challenger, fighting out of the blue corner. He steps into the ring wearing Pinoy, red, white, blue, and gold. He weighed in officially at 118 pounds. As a professional, he maintains a record consisting of 25 victories against one lone defeat and 17 of his victories coming by way of knockout. The former WBA interim super flyweight and former IBF flyweight champion of the world. From General Santos City, the Philippines, the Filipino Flash, Nonito Donaire. His opponent across the ring in the red corner. He steps in wearing white trimmed in black and gold. He registered an identical weight of 118 pounds. As a professional, he steps in with 44 victories against only two losses, two draws, and 34 of those victories coming by way of knockout. The former two-time WBO Junior Bantamweight, former WBO Flyweight, and the reigning WBC and WBO Bantamweight Champion of the World. Fighting out of the Gimnasio Cochul Montiel, y puro mochi, Sinaloa, Mexico. Fernando Cochulito Montiel. All right, let's go. Hey, Francisco, they gotta go. Okay, trunks here are good. Trunks here are good. Anything below that line is a foul. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room so you know that I expect a clean fight. I want to remind you to protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Acuérdese, quiero una pelea limpia. Dios los bendiga, toque montes. God bless, touch up. Sometimes the elite of a division meet and we wind up with a dud. Such was the case with Tim Bradley, and Devin Alexander a couple weeks ago. Sometimes we get a classic, like 11 years ago, in this building on this day, with Marco Barrera and Antonio Barrera and Eric Morales. Which one will this be? 12 rounds to settle that score between Montiel and Donaire. Donaire with the two-inch height advantage. Don't push it, don't push it. Boy, is that a big factor here? Oh, it's not a big factor in the beginning, but later in the fight, it, be it can become a big factor. All that depends on how well he uses his jab. Great thing about these two guys that they both come from is that they both come from great boxing backgrounds. They've been in it since they were little kids, and this is sometimes what separates boxing from other uh, combat sports. And yeah, Montiel took a shot from Donaire. Good left hand by Donaire. Wings a right hand, does Donaire. We have to remember that Montiel sometimes has problems with speed. That's what Mark Too Sharp Johnson was a, gave him such a problem with. Donaire, you can see, is the better athlete, taller, quicker, more explosive. Montiel, in recent years, has developed a devastating one-punch type left hook. And Donaire will have to be very careful of that one-punch left hook because, like you said, it can be devastating. That's what Montiel used to take Hasegawa's belt in Japan last year. Montiel has seen the canvas six times in his career. Donaire's never been down. Two minutes in, the most telling blows landed by Donaire. Donaire was a substantial favorite coming in. 
so far you can see why. He's got special athletic talent. Keeps that right hand up. Just knowing Montiel has that good sweeping left. Montiel showed a very good head move early in the fight. Let him go. Let him go. In a lot of ways, they almost fight like they're bigger guys. Well, they push definitely like they're bigger guys. <laughs> Montiel, a little off balance, is going to land his shot. How are you feeling? Good? Get to get a little closer then. Manuel. Vaselina, Vaselina. The Vaseline. There's a little blood here. The other one. It's okay. You get excited about the crowd, okay? Do your game plan. In and out, he throws punches back up and counter, okay? Okay. Okay. He's waiting. He's waiting for you to throw that right hand to counter that hook. So don't throw from far away. Don't throw from far away. Okay. Listen to me. He sees Donier come. He slips the jet, the right hand, and rolls under. Okay. Comes up with a left hook, a beautiful left hook to the chin, early in the fight. Counting blows landed by Donier in round number one. So far, we have excellent high-level, high-speed chess. Matiel showing a strong chin here, but that was a beautiful right hand he just took from Donaire. And his knees didn't even buckle. And Donaire is a puncher. When Victor Chinian was rampaging and beating everything, just destroying guys, everyone in his path, Donaire destroyed Darchinian and has rarely lost a round since then. Now, now you see Montiel starting to put the pressure on because he realizes he's not going to win an outside boxing match. So now he's starting to apply the pressure a little bit more. Boy, how should he go about doing that? Well, he's doing it with feints right now. He got his hands up high and he's faking at the guy to try to make him do something or hold him for a jab like he just did. But Donaire is a slick character, so he has to be really careful here. Montiel getting a little rhythm here in round number two. Countered after Donaire missed with a wild right. Good roll. Oh, there he is. Out of there. It's over with. It's over with. That is done. That is done. Seven. Counter left hand. Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, Sergio Martinez, and Russell Moore is going to let it continue. Now he stops it. You have company.
Donito Donaire with a counter left after absorbing a right, exalting the Filipino fans here in Las Vegas. Nothing more determined than a fighter out to prove something to not only himself, but to his family. Kiss to his wife, Rachel. He's on top of the world tonight. Take a look at the knockdown, the first one. It's a counter shot after Montiel scored with a right hand. Yeah, Montiel was putting the pressure on, but I said he had to be careful because this kid is dangerous. So he follows with a right hand, he checks hooks, check hooks him off of the right hand with a beautiful left hook, something that Montiel never saw coming. And I was surprised that Russell Mora let it continue. Well, you have Montiel yep. was rolling around on the ground. Yeah, but you gotta give that that the champ that type of respect. You know, you got to give him that much respect. Perfect counter shot by Nonito Donaire. The first time I seen this kid box, I told him he was something special. He was my new top pound for pound fighter, and he proved tonight why I thought that. Yeah, Roy, you were talking him up all week, and you see it again. There's the right. From Montiel on the counter left hand. Now you saw Montiel rolling around on the campus. His legs were kicking, but he did get up, and Russell Mora let it continue. And that says a lot about Montiel to show you how game he is because most fighters never would have got back to their feet after going down like that and performing on the floor the way he did. So you have to take your head off and say a lot about Montiel. He's a great fighter, a great champion. And Russell Moore watched two punches land. You see Montiel still looks out of it. A left and a right, and Russell Moore then steps in and allows no further damage. And really, he took those two punches pretty good to be as hurt as he was. Official time of the stoppage. Here's Lupe Contreras. Tested blows obligates referee Russell Mora to step in and stop this bout with an official time of two minutes, 25 seconds of round number two. The winner, by way of technical knockout, and now the new WBC and WBO Bantamweight champion of the world, the Filipino flash. No Nito Impressive performance by the Filipino Flash. No Nito Donaire. Let's take a look at the total punch numbers as compiled by CompuBox. Total punches first. Donaire landed 17 of 61, 28%. Montiel. Actually landed at a higher percentage with the power shots. Donaire landed some big shots, including obviously that counter left hand that knocked down Montiel in round number two. 15 of 30, 50%. He was quicker, faster, and stronger. Max is in the ring with Nonito Donaire. Nonito Donaire. Oh my God. What just happened? Well, first of all, I want to thank everyone out here for supporting this fight. Salat na mga Pilipino dito, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. And to all the Mexicans who showed up as well, thank you guys for supporting this fight. Um, you know, I just came out there, believing what I had, what, what I had uh, this talent that God has given me. You know, um, actually, I predicted this second round knockout, I think it was second round, um, uh, like three months ago. He seemed to be finding his rhythm a little bit in the second round right before you knocked him out. Can you talk about that? Oh, that rhythm was given because I wanted to see that exactly what I did. I just wanted to see how his body was, how, um, where his head was gonna be, and that's when I timed it. I mean, I, you know, you have to take some in order for you to gain some knowledge. So you're operating in the matrix, everything is slowed down for you? Pretty much, that's what I keep telling everybody, but people think I'm crazy because I can see it that way in that ring. And that's why I knew exactly what was gonna happen, where, where, where he was gonna be at, 
and uh, definitely I did it. Nonito, we did a feature on you and your father before the show. A lot has been made about the fact that you had to strike out on your own and become your own man. How do you feel about that now? I mean, I think God has his plan and I will just have faith in God's plan. But, you know, I am thankful that I have everybody in my corner. You know, I got Robert Garcia, Jonathan Peñalosa, um, uh, Michael Basil, Cameron Ford, Cameron Duncan, and most of all, Victor and Remy Kurchemny. They're just fabulous and I love them to death. And most of all, my wife, thank you so much. I love you, baby. Now, you can stick around and beat up the bantamweights and the junior bantamweights as you've been doing your whole career. You're only lost. You're in your second pro fight, essentially undefeated. <laughs> or you could move up and target some bigger and better game. Juan Manuel Lopez and Gamboa come to mind. They've been talked about for each other. But what about for you? I think that I want to be undisputed in this weight class. And if that doesn't happen, I got my, I got my, my, th my trust and faith in, uh, in, in Cameron Duncan. And if that's 122, let's go. If that's 126, let's go. I think that it keeps me moving. It keeps me be the best of who I am and most of all the people that supported me. I thank them so much. Pound for pound has made a lot of inboxing. Floyd Mayweather is inactive. Sergio Martinez has a tough assignment ahead. If he doesn't win it, it's you and Manny Pacquiao, Pacquiao and you, on the top of the list. Can you talk about how you feel about the fact that he is Filipino and you are Filipino-American. I believe that uh, Pacquiao has, has given me this opportunity and I always will thank him for that, you know. Um, I don't mind being number two and uh, definitely, you know, that's a fantasy. But I, if, if it goes to that, it's the best against the best. And you know what, it's good for boxing. Why not, but you know. Are you saying that you would one day want to fight Manny Pacquiao? No, no way, no way. Like I said, I have, I have the utmost respect for Manny. You know, he, like I said, I don't mind being number two. I'm happy being number two, if that's what people call me. I am here, I'm blessed, and I'm just, I just have uh, the, the, the best people around me, and I'm happy, and, and that makes me number one in them. Well, you're certainly number one so far in everyone you fought, and uh, we look forward very much to seeing you again in the near future. I hope so, I hope so, and uh, thank you guys so much for giving me this opportunity, Bob, top rank, and everyone, uh, WBO and WBC, thank you guys. I got you guys this stuff now, and it's gonna be hanged with, with utmost respect. The electrifying Nonito Donaire. Bob? All right, thank you very much, Max. Now, we wanted to talk to Fernando Montiel as he lost his two belts, but he was taken to the back there. He, the doctors want to check him out just to make sure that his health is okay, so we were not able to get a word in with Fernando Montiel, who was stopped in round number two by Nonito Donaire's counter left hand. He was whisked to the back area. He'll be checked out by the doctors. Uh, ringside physician just to make sure that he's okay because it was a devastating punch that knocked him down and Roy um, first of all talk a little bit about what you saw out of Donaire and where you see him heading well what you see out of Donaire is a guy who's really studied uh, the sport his father did a great job getting him, giving him a great foundation now he's moved on and stepped into his own world which you knew he would have to do one day in order to achieve what God has given him God has blessed this kid with wonderful talent and his talent that's beyond what his family can understand right now. So I'm glad to see him take advantage of that talent that God gave him and move on and make big steps, which means he had to step away, step out on faith, depend on God and move forward and become who God meant for him to be. So I think he's in my book, pound for pound, the second guy on the list right under Manny Pacquiao. And for the first time in almost five years, Fernando Montiel loses a fight. He hadn't lost since May of 2006. He showed you a lot the way he got up, didn't he? He showed me a whole lot. And with that pound for pound, that's because Floyd is not active right now. So since he's not active, that's why this kid would be number two. Uh, yeah, Montiel showed a whole lot of guts by getting up from a shot like that and still coming back. And the two shots that Donnell hit him with didn't really bother him that bad being as hurt as he was already. But the first shot caught him by surprise. He never saw it coming, and those are the ones that do the most damage. Roy, great having you on Boxing After Dark, buddy. Thank you. Glad to be here.